There once was a man who brought life into pages, a man whose work would live through the ages, a man whose books jumped upon arrival, a man by the name of Theodore Geisel. A name that was unfamiliar to many a folk, he went by a different name when he wrote. A name he put to very good use was the name of the great Dr. Seuss. In 1927 he quit Oxford, filled with doubt. He was branded a failure, a college dropout. He left for America not a moment too soon where he would pursue a career in illustration and cartoons. For $25 his first work was sold to the Saturday Evening Post, but still his career was on hold. But soon he would find his first major hit, an ad campaign called Quick Henry the Flit. Ted soon became a sought-after man. Every company wanted him for their marketing plan. For 20 years he remained in advertising, but he wanted to explore a new media, something more appetising. He found children's books to be bland and boring, so he created his own using rhyme and drawing. His first ever book was Loving and Sweet, titled And To Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street. The book sold well, so he wrote four more, but the timing was wrong, for the world went to war. His career was on hold, and so he turned to politics, where he wrote racy cartoons to enforce war tactics. Many depicting the Nazis and Hitler, some distasteful, sour and bitter. Depictions today would be crass and racist, used to invoke anger, getting young men to enlist. Over the course of the war, 400 were made. They were used to show that America would not be afraid. He created films and cartoons for that's all he could do. His most popular one called Private Snafu. Snafu. Situation normal. All... All fouled up. Snafu was a fool, a bumbling mess. He was created to show idiocy, to fill the fighting privates with stress. To show them not what to do during a time of hate, to keep their minds focused, to make sure they shot straight. It wasn't just cartoons, he also made documentaries. Our job in Japan and your job in Germany. Shown to soldiers before their deployment. They were used for education, not for enjoyment. Seuss wasn't alone with his shocking creations, he simply joined others against the Axis nations. As the war ended, Ted took time to reflect. He felt ashamed of himself and wanted to reconnect. He took a trip to Japan to gain some perspective. He was overcome by awe powerfully affected. Having been branded an enemy during the First World War, he understood what it felt like, a different side of the story he saw. He wanted to repay his respects, but didn't know what to do. But a story did help, called Horton Hears a Who. The story, an allegory for relations with Japan, about looking after each other, no matter the man. The war now over, his mind on writing, bringing joy to the world after all the fighting. With every new book, he skyrocketed to fame. Soon Dr. Seuss would be a household name. He uses such simple rhymes. He's rhyming, you know, ham, Sam and am, which by itself doesn't sound very inspiring, but he manages to make the characters really come alive. He devised a structure to present his rhyming. It was about rhythm and perfect timing. A structure that invoked enjoyment and laughter. It was just two unstressed syllables and one stressed syllable after. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. With this simple structure, kids could read with ease. They could get lost in a fantasy world to be as free as they pleased. But what they were reading with their freedom of choice was what Seuss was telling them in his rhythmic written voice. His stories are presented as a harmless tale, but they all present a much deeper, finer detail. 
A book about fishes seems simple enough, but it's about one's decision when the choice may be tough. A lot of books that you think are all right for kids, like underneath there's things that aren't really suitable, but you don't realise it till you're an adult. The Lorax, however, the message is more clear, a message much deeper than it originally appears. The story of the Wansler and his creation, the Thneed. The story of one man's actions overcome by greed. Chopping down trees for his own financial gain, he was warned to stop, but he had become insane. A lot of children's books that I quite enjoyed when I was a child, especially the older ones from sort of the 30s or, or earlier times, if you look at them now, with an adult's eye view, you see things that are fairly unpleasant and you wouldn't necessarily want your children to read um, because times have changed and that just isn't really acceptable. As long as it's bright and colourful and they can engage with it, then that's fine. Um, but I think having a deeper meaning is better because it gives them a chance to learn things that the parents might not want to teach them or they might not be able to learn a different way. I think I would still continue to read his current, the books that I, that I like because as long as the content in them is appropriate, but yes, maybe I'll look into it in more detail. <laughs> Seuss enjoyed privacy. He kept his feelings near. He didn't tell people of his irrational fear. You would think writing for children would be so gratifying, but instead Ted found them terrifying. His most famous quote is a jolly old gem. When asked about kids, he replied, You have them. I'll amuse them. Ted didn't care much for public appearance. He found he could work better if he kept his distance. Some say he was isolated from society and kept disconnected, but this took a toll on his life for his loved ones it affected. In 1967, his wife Helen died. The cause of death was, all too sadly, suicide. A secret exposed about Ted's private life, a love for a woman other than his wife. With suspicions of an affair and an illness still growing, she wanted to protect Ted from his fans ever knowing. Getting weaker and weaker and the affair coming to light, she tried her hardest but had already lost the fight. The very next year he married his lover and took a break from writing to take time to recover. With the whole ordeal having an impact on Ted, he wanted to get back to work and clear his head. He would continue to write with the same whimsy and charm. He wanted to right his wrongs and to cause no harm. In 1990 he wrote, Oh the places you'll go, about life and its challenges, about taking it slow. It was the last book he would ever write, another success much to his delight. 1991 was the year of his death. It was that wicked villain cancer that drew his last breath. As the world mourned the passing of Seuss, the world lost a great writer, their sweet Mother Goose. I do think Dr Seuss is still really relevant today and I think um, it almost surprises me that things like The Grinch with the focus on waste and consumerism is so old in a way because I think it's a real problem that we've got today. Um, yeah, so I think definitely the sort of morals in his stories are definitely very relevant to children today. He left a legacy which stands strong today. His work has influenced children in many a major way. Getting them to read books by choice and not chore. He made reading fun rather than a tedious bore. His work is one we'll never forget, especially with a new book called Which Pet Should I Get? An old manuscript found is a wonderful find, to introduce children to his wacky, brilliant mind. Oh, his last quote was one so peaceful. Finally, I can say that I wrote not for kids, but for people. <laughs>